All right. So in this video, we're going to look at an application for double and triple integrals, um, which is finding the moment and the center of mass of an object. Um, this is something you perhaps learned in 21B, second quarter calculus here at UC Davis. Um, recently, I've noticed they have taken moments and centers of mass out of the um, syllabus for official syllabus for the 21B course. So this may not be something you have seen, uh, which is really kind of a unfortunate because this topic usually gets covered in 21D and it helps if you have seen this in 21B. So if you haven't if covered this before, um, you may want to watch. I have another video, which I'll link um, at the bottom of this one. Uh, for another video for doing 21B style center of mass uh, and moment calculations with a single integral. All right, but uh, so the idea, assuming you've got some knowledge of that, um, there were some formulas that we're gonna adapt now for, um, in 21B, we were talking about two dimensional thin plates. So they had no thickness to them, which of course in the real world, makes no sense, um, but there were three calculations you would need to find the center of mass. You would need to know the mass of your thin plate and recall that density uh, density is normally mass divided by volume if you're talking about a three-dimensional shape, but if you're talking about a thin two-dimensional plate, this is 2D, then we kind of adapt it and we say that density is mass divided by area. Um, again, that doesn't really make sense in the real world, but we'll just use that idea and extend it when we start talking about actual three-dimensional solids. So for mass, you wanna add up um, for every point in your region, the density times the area, because if density is mass times mass divided by area, then mass is density times area. So we're gonna add up the density times all our infinitesimally small areas, units of area over the region. Um, then we talked about the moment of any point in your on your thin plate about both the y-axis and the x-axis. So let's, let's get an example here. So say you had a thin plate that was maybe bounded by y equals x squared and y equals four, something like that. So the idea of moment, and so this plate has some mass, it's a thin plate. The idea about, about like moment about the y axis is if this was, think of this like a door that was allowed to swing freely around the y axis, as you know from your experience of kind of pushing a door open or pulling a door open, the further away you push from the axis of rotation, you're gonna get a better, um, be able to open the door or shut the door easier, right? You won't have to apply so much of a force. So the moment is a measure of that, the resistance to swinging around an axis. And for any given force, the distance away from, in this case, the y-axis, this distance, the, every point along here has the same moment, assuming this is a constant density. So it's related to the distance to the axis of rotation, which is why when we do the moment about the y-axis, this distance would be x. And so we add up for every point in this region, x times the mass, and we integrate over the area. So double integral. Similarly, we do the moment about the x-axis. So if you can imagine this was a door swinging around the x-axis, then all of the points that have the same moment would lie on a horizontal cross section and the distance to the x-axis would be y. So it's just the reverse, y times density times the area. Once we have those three values, the center of mass, which is like the balancing point, if you were to balance this plate at one point, we call it x bar, y bar would be the center of mass and center of mass for x bar is moment about the y-axis over the mass and for y bar moment about the x axis over the total mass. So now we extend these ideas to a three dimensional solid and the formulas 
very similar. So the mass over of a three-dimensional solid, we're going to need to, for every point, multiply the density times the little sm small unit of volume. Density times volume gives us mass, and we integrate over the whole region. Now we talk about the moment, instead of around an axis, this is the moment around the yz plane. A little bit hard to think about that in terms of a door, but the moment about the yz plane, which is defined to be x times the density, integrate that over the volume. Uh, yx, if you think about a three-dimensional three -dimensional axis system, coordinate system, if I've got some three-dimensional solid, located at a point x, y, x, y, z. So if I take a point here, x, y, z, and I say the moment about the y, z plane, what I'm looking for is I want the distance from this point to the y, z plane. The y, z plane is the back um, piece of paper here that this is on. But how the distance to that is how far we moved away from the y, z plane, which is x. So we're going to take x as the distance to the yz plane. Similarly, if you want the moment about the xz plane, the distance from any point to the xz plane is going to be y. And same thing for the moment about the xy plane, that distance is z. So these are moments about the planes. And then once you have those for a three-dimensional solid, your x bar, y bar, and z bar can be found by dividing these respective moments, each of them by the mass of the object. So let's look at an example. You can imagine this becomes very, very tedious. Um, if for you, you could potentially have to do four integrals, one for each of the three moments and one for the mass, four integrals um, to get an answer. But a lot of the more reasonable problems, which is what I'm going to start with here, I'm going to find the center of mass of the solid with constant density. Recall if, if your solid has constant density, we can also call the center of mass the centroid. We usually use that word. And if you see centroid, it's implied that there's a constant density. And so our solid is bounded below by this paraboloid, z equals x squared plus y squared, on top by the plane z equals four. And so <laughs> the reason I say this is more of a reasonable one is by symmetry, because this thing has constant density and we know a paraboloid is nice and symmetrical, we can presume that the x and y coordinates, the center of mass of this object, would lie somewhere on the z-axis. Right? So we know that x bar and y bar would be zero, which means we really just need to find z bar, which is defined to be the moment about the xy plane divided by the total mass. So let's start with the mass. The mass is, we're going to do a triple integral here. Um, density, if it's constant, we'll just acknowledge that means it's some number, some constant. We'll just re write delta there for it. And remember, with triple integrals, we want to imagine now some vertical columns in here that stretch from z equals 4 is your top function. Every column in here will hit that on the top, and on the bottom, they will hit z equals x squared plus y squared, my paraboloid. And then I want to integrate that over r. Now, what is r in this case? r is where do all these columns lie in terms of x and y? Well, you can hopefully see that they're all going to lie within this top circle. So if I kind of imagine bringing that down into the xy plane, that's just going to be this circle, which is the intersection of z equals 4 and z equals x squared plus y squared. So that's going to be the circle x squared plus y squared equals 4. That's my region of integration. OK, so to actually do this, I'm going to pull out the delta because it's constant. The antiderivative of z would just, of dz would just be z. I plug in 4 minus x squared plus y squared. And I kind of left these off for the moment because now we see that we're integrating, we have to integrate the region over this circle that I drew up there. 
And we also have four minus x squared plus y squared. And if you um, have been practicing doing integrals in polar coordinates, you might realize this is going to work out a lot better in polar coordinates because I'm integrating within a circle. It's going to be a lot easier to describe the region of integration. So I'm going to convert this, switch to polar. Remember one of your conversions, x squared plus y squared is r squared in polar. So this is just going to be four minus r squared. Don't forget in polar, you have to, your unit of area is r dr d theta. So you have that extra r there. And describing this circle is very simple. No matter what theta is, my r stretches from 0 to 2, as long as theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And so distributing the r, finding my antiderivative, plugging in my limits, I end up getting uh, just 4 when I plug in the 2. And then antiderivative of that is 4 theta, evaluated from 2 pi to 0, gives me 8 pi times delta times delta. So that is the mass of this three-dimensional solid. Now we have another triple integral to work out, which is the moment about the xy plane. So that is defined to be the triple integral uh, z times basically the mass the same integral we did. So now we're just gonna throw in an extra z. I still pulled out the delta. That affects this because my antiderivative now with respect to z is z squared over two. If I plug in, I get 16 over two um, minus this over two. I know what I did. I pulled out the one half because I didn't want to deal with that fraction. That's a constant. I can pull it all the way out if I want to. So that's just 16 minus this squared. And same idea. I can see I'm going to have to integrate over that circle again. This is going to work much better in polar coordinate. So at this point, I switch to polar. So 16 minus r. This is r squared squared now. So it's really r to the fourth times r dr d theta. Same limits of integration as the mass calculation. And now it's just a bunch of busy work. Distributed and found my antiderivatives and plugged in and hopefully this is right I, I, if you catch an error please let me know um, i ended up getting for my final answer 64 pi over 3 times delta and so using my answer for the mass i can now see that z bar is the moment over the xy plane divided by the mass and that simplifies to just eight thirds so the center of mass of that object I have is zero, zero, and eight thirds. Another thing we can do that we couldn't have done, even if you did this in 21B, in 21B we were calculating centers of mass of thin plates um, with a single integral. And now that we know double integrals, we can do something that we couldn't have done in 21b, and that is this. So here's a thin plate, and we've got a formula for the density of any point uh, in this thin plate that is x squared times y. And in order to calculate the mass of this plate, we know it's the density. I want to multiply the density times the area and add them all, all up throughout the uh, region. So I would have x squared y times the area. Recall in 21b, we wouldn't have known how to deal with two variables in our integral. But now with double integrals, we can handle this because we can express the area as a double integral. So I've got my density. And then I'm going to describe this. Uh, I'm choosing dy dx. That means for any given x value, what does y vary from? Well, it varies from 2x to 0. And that's true as long as x is between 0 and 1. And if you work that out, hopefully you'll get 2 fifths. Moment about the y-axis. This is a two-dimensional plate, so just a double integral. Multiply x times the mass. That's the distance to the y-axis. So I have an extra x times x squared y 
that's my density. Work that out. Hopefully you can show that you get one third. Same thing for a moment about the x-axis. Now you're gonna multiply y times your mass. I ended up getting four ninths. You should probably pause the video and make sure you get those calculations, get those numbers. So therefore my x bar and y bar, x bar, it's always tricky because you think it should be m sub x, but it's actually the moment over the y axis, moment about the y axis over the mass. So one third divided by two fifths is five six. Y bar is M sub X over the mass. I got 10 nights. And so just making a comment, same comment I made as we started the problem. Even though this was a 2D plate, we computed the center of mass in 2D plates in, in 21B. We could not have done this because the density was a function of both X and Y. And we couldn't have integrated with respect to those two variables in a single integral. So that's one advantage now of double integrals. I'm going to make a separate video for there is another topic in this section, which is the idea of moments of inertia, also called second moments. Um, so I will get that out soon.